What's, what drives me is my why, right? Because what I feel like is, yeah, this, this little stuff I deal with, these racial microaggressions and all of those things, have, no, they have nothing on what my ancestors dealt with, right? And what people before me dealt with. And sometimes what the kids I'm supporting deal with. So for me, it's my why is not about me. It's about my kids. It's about other kids. It's about making the world better for those that are coming after us. So my thing is, I can take it. My shoulders are big enough to be able to bear the burden of making things a little bit better. So I can take some of the nonsense that comes with it. Um, and, and so my why is really what drives me. So why am I doing what I'm doing? And I'm doing what I'm doing to have an impact on you all so that the world can be different and you can have doors open to where you can have opportunity to impact the world differently. So for me, that's what, that's my, whatever drives me is also one of the things that gives me the most confidence actually, because um, I look in the kids, the faces of kids every day and that's why. How would you advise us to tackle the stubborn people yeah. who we wish to change their minds? Yeah, so one of the things I've found is people really don't react to things until they're personal. So until it impacts them directly, right? I mean, so um, one of the ways that I, I have been able to do this is I actually, it's with relationship. So I try to build relationship with people. And then I have, you know, like I said, I have five boys and two girls or African-American kids that I've been in the system for 30 years almost. I have stories and I have I have history and I have relevant experiences. And when I share those with somebody I have a personal relationship with, it becomes much more relevant to them. It's not the other, it's not, you know, what you see in the news, it's not the othering, right? It's not, well, those people over there, it becomes very, mm -hmm. very personal. And I bring in person like students. I mean, so if it's up close and personal, I think that that's, that is huge. Um, it's hard, like I say, it's it's hard to hate up close. So most people who hate or have ideas about certain people, perspectives, things, um, are ideas that they get from other things, right? It's rarely based on personal experience, very rarely. It's based on possibly what they were taught or what they read or what they see or what they, you know, statistics or whatever they choose. Um, so for me, building those relate those personal relationships and making it personal and immediate that's how I am able to really um, connect with people and, and begin to change our perspectives. As leaders, we can face um, others with different opinions than us, and can it, it can be hard for them to see our perspectives, especially um, when it comes to our parents. So what advice can you give us to help our parents to understand and be okay with our own opinions? So I think for me, one of the things that I do in order to be what I consider what something that's helped me be effective in my work is I always look for the counter argument. I have to know what the counter argument is to what I'm saying. So I have to know what the opposite position is. So if your parents have a position on something that differs from what you have, you got to know why. You got to do a little bit of research, right? Figure out what your, op well, and I hate to say it like that with your parents, but you got to figure out your, op your opposition and figure out where they're coming from, right? Because if you don't know why you believe what you believe, then it's going to be hard for you to counter that. But you have to know that you believe what you believe, which is not what they believe. You have to know why you don't believe what they believe, if that makes sense. So you have to know why what they're saying you don't agree with and what parts of it. Mm -hmm. That way, if you can, you can acknowledge, you know what, mom, I totally understand why you feel this way. And, and I can, I can, you know, I can see that this, these are the reasons and I can see, you have to acknowledge, right? Acknowledge their position, acknowledge the logic of their position and acknowledge, you know, their passion of, and then come back and say, okay, and now I just want you to understand. And this is why I feel this way about this and this is why this is important to me you have to know what you're what you have an opinion against and you have to know why and give respect to that position of the person who it's coming from mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah thank you yeah i call it knowing the counter argument because i do research on like i probably know more about um national white nationalists and i mean because i do in the racial equity where i i've researched all kinds of things about hate groups and 
and, you know, anti LGBTQ groups and all of those things. Right. Because that's what I'm, that's what I'm pushing against. But if I don't know what they're talking about, if I don't know their statistics, if I don't know their story, if I don't know their counter argument, then I can't, I'm not confident in mine. So I have to be prepared to know what they're going to say. It's like boxing, right? If you know what punch is coming, you can counter punch. If you don't know what punch is coming, you might get knocked out. So it's kind of that same, I want to know what punch is coming. I don't want to be surprised. I don't want somebody to throw some information at me that I don't know what's coming, that I'm not familiar with, if it's something that I really feel passionate about. And I know I'm going to be boxing with them 